Ismail Akuku. I'm a stylist. Scramble for Africa. Pride. Traveling. In the year 1898, a small region of Africa called Savo became a human butcher shop. More than 100 people were mauled and eaten by a pair of legendary monsters. This is the story of two of the most elusive and dangerous animals that ever lived, and what ultimately became of the man-eating lions of Tsavo. Whether it's in history class or a communal conversation, stories from our past are, give, are given to us in a particular format that could sometimes only address surface level interests or even could dangerously have been weaved to place people in a certain mental space. One of the overriding themes generally in our approach at storytelling and particularly in the Savo Express is our curiosity and thirst for knowledge. Uh, the Manita's story was one that we immediately fell in love with when we began the conversation, partly because of its casual significance, a theme through its contribution to history, but mostly because uh, we felt there was this like particular single narrative that had been forced down on us. Was Killing the lions in the manner that Patterson did, the best approach, given his interest as a hunter in, in the world Africa, uh, was the cultural state of indigenous African communities uh, who had been living the, with the lions long before civilization had started uh, to trickle in. Uh, as there is virtually no elaborate record of any African African story, considering uh, no much written accounts uh, on the native Africans, uh, and has been has been Kenyan living in this internet age, what does this story mean to me? What does this story mean to us? And why should we care first of all? Knowledge more than often forms the basis of actual change. A new perspective can feel like a throwaway buzzword when most creatives or artists are busy trying to tick every box and cater to a work public. But when the essence of the term comes at you in a genuine heartfelt way, you think about the real impact on just a story that could take place further down the line when this generation or any other becomes agents of change and as a result make a valuable contribution to not only just stories but, cultural, but culture and history. Thankfully, in the information age that we live in, it's new perspectives such as the Savo Express that spark actual conversations. We tell this story of an, of an old man, of an old African man named Suri Mwanza who grew up during the construction of the Kenya-Uganda Railway back in 1890 when it started in Mombasa and all the way to 1904 when it reached Kisumu, gets a one and only chance to go back in time to his younger self and change what he didn't need, needing of change. There is wishing for a chance to turn back the clock. There is hoping for a chance to rectify your past. Suri gets that chance. Suri is an ordinary man with goals and misgivings like any other ordinary man who is gifted with a one-time chance to travel back to his childhood and use his time 
the best way he sees fit. I think the primary goal for the Savo Express is to show that ordinary people are capable of extraordinary heroic acts. We ask these key questions like, uh, what, what will he do? Will he save the lions from the deadly hands of Colonel Patterson? Will he be able to rescue his father who was killed by the lions? Will he change history? Will he change his future?